Good afternoon. My name is Howard Lazarus, and I have the pleasure and privilege of serving as a director of your Public Works Department. This afternoon, we're going to walk through the financial forecast for the upcoming year for the Public Works Department. Public Works has the organizational mission to develop, design, build, and maintain many elements of the city's infrastructure. And over the past several years, we've had great success in developing that infrastructure for the benefit of all of Austin's residents. I'd like to start off with a discussion of what's new in the upcoming year. This year, at the recommendation and suggestion of many of our citizens, we've programmed sidewalk repairs and signal replacements into our operating budget. We're going to do that through the addition of concrete and utility cut crews and through bringing in some staff that were temporary employees in past years. We're going to fully implement a career progression program that we have for our street and bridge crews and look to expand that throughout the department. Uh, what's exciting this year as well is the execution of the bond projects that the voters approved in last year's bond uh, ordinance that was on the ballot. Finally, we're going to take many of the dollars that we have that are, have been shown as being uh, surplus at the end of the year and put those into operation projects, sub-accounts, so that we can provide greater visibility into those and use those funds more effectively. As an organization, Public Works is an enterprise operation in that we do not receive any general fund monies. And our budget is based upon three different funds. The transportation fund, which pays for infrastructure operation maintenance and repair. The capital projects management fund, which provides the resources for us to execute the capital improvement program. And the child safety fund, which pays for the safe routes to school program and for our crossing guards. Last year, Public Works budget was just under $80 million with a grand total of 689 staff members. As an overview, this year the cost drivers from a citywide basis include some increases in health insurance costs, our fuel fleet maintenance cost utilities, and some administrative support that we get from the city, including our computer support and the workers' compensation costs. From a department perspective, we're going to increase the use of our transportation fund to provide for sidewalk, bicycle, and signal projects. We are going to make uh, accommodations for potential escalation of commodity costs for both operations and capital improvement projects. And as I said before, we want to address new crews to uh, implement sidewalk and utility cut repairs. From the revenue side, there is no increase in our residential transportation user fee this year, and we will receive additional cap, uh, capital project management fund revenues from the increase in workload. So let's get into the details of each of these, uh, these, each of these budgets. The transportation fund provides the resources for us to do operation maintenance and expansion of the city's transportation system. It funds both the Public Works Department and the Transportation Department, and Director Rob Spiller will tell you about those aspects that deal with transportation. The primary revenue source into the transportation fund are the transportation user fee and cost reimbursements we get from other departments and doing work for them and then also some right-of-way fees we get for use of the right-of-way. As you look at the budget throughout the coming years, you'll see that we have finally reached the point where sources and uses of those funds are balanced and the fund remains stable throughout the entire uh, forecast period. You will note that there is an increase in this year in FTEs for the Public Works Department, and that's primarily due to transitioning temporary employees to full-time employees to address utility cut repairs, additional sidewalk work, and some landscape maintenance work that we have to do. And you can also see that for the second year in a row, there will be no increase in the transportation user fee. The funds that come to Public Works from the Transportation Fund are primarily used for street preventive maintenance, street repair, right-of-way maintenance, and minor construction and repair. The cost that you see for support services and transfers and other requirements support both the Public Works Department and the Transportation Department. And you can see that the Transportation Department has $11 million out of the fund and they have 123 FTEs. Our key performance indicators for the Transportation Fund are primarily related to the condition of our roadways. Beginning in fiscal year 2009, we set a goal to improve the status of our pavements to where more than 80% of those pavements were acceptable or better.
you can see that we've reached that goal five years ahead of time. And in looking at best practices, we've determined that going forward, we're going to strive to sustain 85 to 90 percent of our pavements in satisfactory condition or better. We also try and address 10 percent of our pavements every year. And you can see this past year in 2013, we achieved that goal. The anomaly in these numbers is 2010, where we were well over 12 percent, almost 13 percent. And that is due to an influx of stimulus monies that we received from the federal government that year. But going forward, we anticipate that we will be able to achieve the 10 percent goal each year. Some of the other uh, benchmarks of, of successful performance are shown on this slide. The city engages a benchmark survey every year. And you can see that in all areas, the city of Austin has performed as well or better than the benchmark cities. The one area where we are slightly below the average is in the sidewalk condition in your neighborhoods, and we are making great strides to improve those. During 2013, we will have completed more than 12 and a half miles of new sidewalks throughout our neighborhoods. Other key performance indicators include our response to your calls for emergency and routine repairs. And you can see that while our goal is to respond to routine calls within 72 hours and emergencies within 24 hours at a 95 percent service level, we've actually achieved 100 percent on both of those performance metrics, which is a tribute to the quality of work done by our field crews. On the capital project side, we are funded by the Capital Projects Management Fund. And the purpose of that fund is to provide for the effort required to design, manage, and inspect, and provide quality assurance for our capital improvement program projects. The principal revenue source are the charges that are placed on CAP projects, which are generally less than 6 percent of the project total. Again, looking at the fund over the forecast period, the fund is financially sustainable, and there is a small increase in this coming year proposed of 10 FTEs due to the implementation of the 2012 bond program. This past year, we've had many successes and we've completed several projects. You can see at the top of the list, the African American Heritage and Cultural Center was completed this year, the repairs to the Barton Springs Pool, the Downtown Wastewater Tunnel, the Little Shoal Creek Tunnel, and the Walla Creek Boathouse. There are also many projects that are still under control, including long-term legacy projects, including the Lady Bird Lake Boardwalk, the Walla Creek Tunnel, and Water Treatment Plant 4. All three of those projects are scheduled for completion in the upcoming fiscal year. Some other key performance indicators are shown on this slide. You can see we have almost 400 projects totaling $2 billion in progress. And last year, the value of work was almost $340 million. 100 percent of the projects we do on your behalf meet the design requirements and have no significant problems at the one-year maintenance uh, warranty maintenance period, which is an exceptional uh, measure of project quality. We had 174 projects under construction last year, and our total cost to inspect those was just over 3 percent. On the multimodal use of our right-of-way, you can see that on bike and ped and trail projects, we made a tremendous uh, impact over the past year. Most notably, the city has re doubled the number of bicycle commuters and is now well over 2 percent. We've done that by putting in place over 40 miles of new and improved bicycle facilities and over 12 and a half miles of new compliant and accessible sidewalks. Our last fund, and perhaps the most important, is the Child Safety Fund. And that's the fund we use to pay for crossing guards and for the Safe Routes to School program. Again, the fund is sustainable throughout the year, throughout the forecast period, and there's only an increase of two full-time equivalents this year to provide more training for our crossing guards and our Safe Routes to School program. This fund, though, does provide funding for the 225 crossing guards who provide safety for our children as they go to and from school. The performance indicators for the Child Safety Fund include staffing at 211 locations throughout the city, and we train over 46,000 students per year in safe street crossing, bicycle safety, school bus riding fundamentals, and safe rail and train procedures. But most importantly, the key performance indicator we're proud of is that there have been zero incidents of child safety with this program. I thank you again for joining me during this discussion, and I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, on behalf of all the workers in the Public Works Department, thank you very much.